Hello, good day, and welcome. I am Samuel Babatunde. Welcome to today's basic technology class, where we're going to be looking at the drawing instrument and materials too. That is the second part of drawing instrument and material. In our previous class, we talked about the first part of drawing instrument and material, where we looked at the definition of technical drawing, because we say these drawing instruments and materials are actually used in technical drawing. That is, we cannot talk about this instrument if technical drawing, which is the function of this instrument, is not being talked about. And we say technical drawing is simply defined as a technical language in which what we express our ideas. That is, every things, every innovations, the ideas we have, we express them with by drawing them. And we give an instance that take for instance, you're living in a place whereby your house do not have a number and you want to describe your house to a friend. How do you do this? The best way to do this is to represent what your address in drawing. And we say this drawing is also referred to as technical drawing. Therefore, you've communicated with your friend, known as what a technical language. And then we look at the properties of technical drawing. We say what technical drawing must be neat. It must be accurate and legible. That is, it must follow what the standard signs. So still on this drawing instruments and materials, we discussed about the drawing materials. So we look at the drawing paper, the um, eraser, the pencils. We look at the different types of pencils, the H pencil, the 2H, the HB, and the 2B. And we look at their various uses. So still on the drawing instruments and materials, today we're going to be continuing on it. And for the purpose of today's class, we'll be dealing mainly with the, words, with the drawing instrument. Because in the previous class, we talked about the drawing materials. And I told you, that the differences between these drawing materials and drawing instruments is that the drawing materials are consumable. That is, they can be used up. These drawing materials like your eraser, your pencil, your paper, they can be used up. You can't use a paper that you use for technical drawing again. No. So they're consumable. But for the drawing instruments, they can be used over and over again. They can be used over and over again. And that is the difference between the drawing materials and the drawing instrument. But for today's class, we'll be considering the various drawing instruments. I say drawing instruments and materials are used for undergoing technical drawing. A lot of these instruments will be learned in this lesson. And remember, I've, what, I've described what technical drawing is. I said it's a technical language whereby what, we express our ideas in drawing. So today, we're going to be looking at these various um, instruments that can be used in technical drawing. That is the instrument that are used to, what, to express our mind. That is the instrument that I used to, what, to put down this drawing. Now below is a list of instruments for drawing. We have the drawing board. You have the protractor. The T-square. Don't worry, all this will be. I will show you some of this with the diagrams and then their uses. But for now, I'm just listing them out so you just have an idea of what you're talking about. I said the drawing board, the protractor, the T-square, the French curve, the set square, the compass, scale rule and dividers i'll go over them again what i'm going over them is i want you to memorize it because you might be asked to mention what the various drawing instruments so i'll go over it again so you can memorize it you have the drawing board the protractor the t-square french curve set square compass scale rule and dividers now we'll begin to the uses of these equipment and how we can take care of the equipment remember in our introduction i say we will learn how what we can use this, efficient, this equipment efficiently and also how to care for them. So I'll be moving what, to the uses of this instrument and how they can be cared for. We're moving to the uses of this instrument and how they can be cared for. That's how can we care, how do we care for this instrument? Now, starting with the first, the drawing board. The uses and care of equipment and materials for drawing. So we'll start with the drawing board. Now the drawing paper is placed on the drawing board. Like you can see here now, see the diagram of the drawing board here. You see it has a very, very flat and smooth surface. It has a flat, smooth surface. Look at the surface, very smooth and flat. This is for, for the purpose of, of making an accurate technical drawing. Remember I told you that a technical drawing, one of the properties of technical drawing that it was, it must be neat and accurate. That is why it is called technical because it's not a freehand sketch. So it must be very, very neat and accurate. Now, for you to achieve this, you need a surface that is very, very smooth and flat, plain surface. And that is what, what the drawing board provides us with. The 
drawing paper is placed on this board, on this drawing board. Note that drawing books will not be useful for this practice. Yes, this is not an artwork. We use drawing paper. Drawing books are for artwork. But we need drawing paper to be placed on the drawing board because what? we want an accurate result. We want our result to be neat and accurate, legible. And that is why what? we use the drawing board. Now, how do you care for the drawing board? As you can see the drawing board. Now, how do you care for this drawing board? It must be carefully stored when it is not in use so that the smooth and its edges, the smooth surface and its edges are not damaged. Yes, the essence of caring for this drawing board is to ensure that what? we do not damage the smooth surface because this smooth surface is what is very important, is what is needed in our technical drawing. Now, when this smooth surface is damaged or when it becomes rough or jagged, what happens? It has, what, it has defeated the aim of the drawing because our drawing will no longer be neat. Our drawing will now look scattered. It won't be accurate. And that is why we have to, what, we have to carefully store this drawing board to ensure that the smooth surface and its edges are not damaged. So this is how to care for your drawing board keep it carefully store it carefully to prevent what damages to the smooth surfaces and the edges now i'll move straight to the next to the next um drawing material that is the drawing paper the drawing paper now there are plain papers of different sizes which are always placed on the drawing board they are plain papers of all different sizes, like you can see them now. This one here, this is an A4 size. This is an A4 size paper. We have different sizes of drawing papers. We have the A3, we have the A4, we have A5. The drawing paper decreases as the number what increases. As the number increases, the sizes what decreases. Now, A1 is larger than A2, A2 is larger than A3, and A3 is larger than A4. So the papers was they decrease, the size decreases even as the number of the papers increases. Now, these drawing papers, they are plain papers. Like you can see this one here now. It's a plain paper. Because when you're representing your technical drawing, when you're representing your work, your work must be represented on a plain paper so that it can be neat and accurate. And this plain paper of different sizes, like I told you, which are always placed on the drawing board. You place your drawing paper what, on the drawing board. Remember, we talked about the drawing board the other time. And we said that what, you don't need drawing books for technical drawing. The drawing paper you need. And this drawing paper has to be placed on the drawing board, which has a smooth surface to ensure what it needs an accurate job. Now, how do you care for your drawing papers? They should be folded but stored in a pair of thick cardboard folders. They should be kept in folders or files. Whenever you're done with your technical drawing, the papers, the and the papers that you use should be kept. They should be stored in what in thick cardboard folders to ensure that they are they remain what neat. Also, they can be carefully rolled into scroll and held by a rubber band or cello tape. If you do not want to put them into a cardboard folder, you can also what, roll them into scroll. You know how scroll look like? You roll them into scroll, like in form of a cylinder. You roll them into scroll, and then you hold them with a cello tape or a rubber band. At least this will ensure what? Ensure that it is neat. It ensure that it is neat. Now let's look at another one, the set square. The set square. We have two, two sets of set square. There are two sets of set square. These two set squares are used to draw what vertical lines by placing one side of the triangle containing the right angle against the upper edge of the T square. Now, you have what you call the T square. This T square is like a ruler, but this T square is actually used to what to ensure that our paper is well placed on the drawing board. Now, this T square is what we use to what to guide our drawing. You remember we call it a technical drawing. Now this T-square ensures that what, every of our drawing is accurate. Now, when you want to use your set square, you have to ensure that what, you place your set square in the right manner or in the right position using what, your T-square. Now, look at the diagram of a set square here. This is a set square. Look at a set square here now. These are the two sets of set square. If you look at this set square, you notice that what, it has a 90 degree end. This is the 90 degree edge here. This is 90 degree edge. Look at it. This is 90 degree edge. And now they say that what the two set square are used to draw vertical lines. We use them to draw vertical lines, accurate lines. The set square are used to draw accurate lines. If you want an accurate line in your technical drawing, you make use of the what the set square by placing what one side of the triangle containing the right angle. Now look at it. By placing one side of the triangle, this is the one the side of the triangle containing the right angle. If you look at it, see our graduation. That's the markings on this set square, starting from your zero. 
you see that this zero is actually starting from the what from the right angle side and so when you are placing the set square now you place it that what this right angle side is on the what on the set square on the t square sorry so when you place the side of the triangle contain the right angle against the upper edge of the t square what happens it enables you to draw your what accurate line the vertical lines you draw will not be what will be accurate because you follow the correct procedure now how do you care for your set square you care for your set square like by by what making sure ensuring that the what they do not hit against hard objects <clears throat> now see the set square you can see it's glass it's a glass set square now when they hit against hard um object what happened it might break or it might affect the words it might affect the smooth edges you know this set square like rule we use them to draw vertical lines and the edges are smooth to ensure that what we do not have a rough line or to ensure that our drawings are accurate because the properties of a technical drawing is that it must be neat and accurate so what should be in your mind is that whatever you are producing whatever you are doing has to be neat and accurate it must be legible so when you're using a t square you must a set square you must ensure that what the edges of this set square are smooth to ensure what smooth drawing now the best way to care for your um set square is that you must ensure that these smooth edges do not hit against hard objects because once they hit against hard objects their characteristic or their property is what compromised you understand now remember i told you they are glass and you can also have like you can also have the wooden set square to prevent kerosene from touching it in order to prevent it from cracking and breaking as a glass it can break it can break so what prevents kerosene from touching it because it's my lead it's possible to crack or break so this is are the ways by which we care for what for the set square and i've told you look at the set square this is the diagram this is the 90 degree end so when you're placing it you place this end here on the t square this end they place again the t square to ensure what your drawing now you can even you can even measure your line your vertical line because it's already marked it's graduated zero one two three four five so you measure your line it gives you what an accurate line the line you draw with this, this set with is even more accurate than a meter rule because what you're using you're using the combination of the t square and the set square now let's move to the next which is what which is a pair of compass the pair of compass. Look at the diagram on the compass. I'm sure we are aware of this compass. Now, this compass is used to draw what, circles, arcs. It's used to draw circular arcs and circles. This compass is constructed in such a way that what? Look at it. It has a pointed end, one pointed end, and it has another end whereby you can put your what? Your pencil. Look at this point. This is the pencil. See the pencil. You can see the pencil now. It's attached to this place. Now, when you fix the pencil now, it enables you to what? To draw what? Circular arcs or arcs or circles measured you can use this um, compass to measure what a certain radius of your circle let's say for instance now you want to draw a circle of radius seven centimeter you all you just need to do is to what you pick your compass measure seven centimeter with your compass then place the pointed mouth this mouth here this end point, place it on your paper and then what you draw your circle even if it's arc you want to draw you draw it that is use of a compass it ensures that what you know the main aim of this technical drawing, like I told you, that what you need a neat, accurate, and legible work. So everything you are doing, what must be neat. Now this this compass will enable you what to produce a very neat and accurate what circle. The measurement will be very very accurate because what because of the use of this compass. You just take your defined measurement. If it's five centimeter, you want to use you take it and then you draw it on your paper. You will still discover that what your radius will not be more than five centimeter unless you make mistake from yourself. But it will, it will be accurate. Now, how do we care for these compasses? How do you care for the pair of compasses? Now, it must be clean from sweat after use to prevent corrosion. Remember, these compasses are made of metals. And you know, one of, one of the things that, what, that affects metal is corrosion. When metals are exposed to fluids like water, but they become what? They begin to rust. So to prevent this um, compass from rusting because it's made of metal, Anytime you use it, anytime you're done using it, clean it to ensure that what every sweat from your hands are what are removed. So that is the way to care for your compass. Now we move to the next, which is the what? Which is the T square. The T square. Remember when we were talking about the set square, I mentioned about the T square. And I said this T square enables us to what? It enables us to set our drawing board. Now, the T square is used to draw horizontal lines around a drawing paper. 
Now look at the t-square here. If you're following me, see the t-square, look at my pointer. You see the t-square, this is the t-square. This t-square enables you to, what, to draw horizontal lines around a drawing paper. Now, if you can see, you see this horizontal line now. See this line from here. It is the use of the t-square. It is this t-square that enables you to draw this well, this line. You can see how this line is smooth and accurate. It is the use of the t-square. And the t-square also helps us to set our drawing board. Remember, I was telling you that if you want to set your drawing board, you make use of the t-square. Because sometimes, when you are placing your paper on the drawing board, the paper might not be placed accurately. So now you need your T-square to do what? To set this paper on the drawing board. And that's why we call it the T-square. It enables you to do what? To set your paper, to set your drawing board. And it also helps you to what? To set your set square. Whenever you want to use a set square, this T-square enables you to do what? To set it. If you can look at this diagram now, you see this set square here. This is a set square. You can see how it is placed against this T-square. Look at the T-square here. See the set square placed against the T-square. Now this set square, whenever you use what this t square, whenever you set your set square, so that you can get a what a precise and accurate what line. You can see how it is set against it. So that is the use of what of a t square. It is used to set the drawing board. Now, how do you take care of a t square? This t square should not be used as a walking stick. I know as as kids or as children or as a, as students, you might want to play with your set square. Might want to use it as a walking stick. Maybe you want to imitate or mimic old men walking, do not try that with your T-square. Because your T-square is a technical instrument and it should not be what joked with. So do not use it to, what, to practice walking. Do not use it as a walking stick. No, it's not a walking stick. It is a T-square. It's used for what? For technical drawing. Then the blades, the blade always at right angle to the stock cross piece. That is this part now should always be what, at right angle to the stock. Here, so you can see it. That is when you are placing this T-square now, ensure that you place your T-square words accurately. Place it well. Place it well. Place it well. Because now, if you joke with your T-square, but if you joke with your T-square now, which maybe you use as a working stick, you know this see this place, but see this blade here, this place here, which is always at right angle. If you play with it now, there's a possibility that you will displace the angle of this blade and when you displace the angle of this blade it's going to affect your what your settings because you use this square to set your drawing now when you display this angle your setting will not be accurate and it's definitely what affects your drawing that is how we say you know what do not play with your t-square do not play with your t-square now we'll move to the last but not the least which is the french curve the french curve now this french curve exists in various shapes like you can see See this one here, the shape of this is different from the shape of this. Likewise, this is different from this. So you can have those French curves of diverse words, shapes and types, but it's mainly used for drawing irregular and complex curves. That's just the use of a French curve. French curves are used to draw irregular and complex curves. Irregular and complex curves. So with this, we come to the end of today's lesson on the drawing instruments and materials, part two. I have a brief assignment for you and the assignment is Mention five drawing instruments and mention the use of T-square and Z-square. So one, you have to mention the five drawing instruments and two, mention the use of T-square and Z-square. Before we go, I would like to do a brief recap on what we've discussed. So like I said, we discussed about the second part of the drawing instruments, where we look at the various drawing instruments, the drawing board, the protractor, T-square, the French curve, the Z-square, compass, scale rule, and dividers. Then we pick the, each of them and we discuss about their uses and how we can take care of them to ensure that they're in their best state. Now, number one, the drawing board. We say the drawing board is where what our drawing paper are placed. And this drawing board provides a smooth surface for an accurate and neat drawing. So therefore, we have to what, ensure that this smooth surface is protected to ensure an accurate result. We also look at the drawing papers. And we see what these drawing papers are of different sizes. And that to care for our drawing paper, we should ensure that we put them into folders, cardboard folders, or we can put them, or we can um, roll them into scrolls and hold them with a tape or rubber band. <coughs> and then we also look at the set square. And I look at, I gave it, I said this is set square. And that this set square, I used to draw accurate towards vertical lines. And that for you to use this set square, you have to place the right angle parts of the set square, this right angle end of the set square, you place it against the T square to ensure what an accurate and neat drawing. And for you to take care of this T-square, 
ensure that what you do not allow these smooth surfaces, these smooth surfaces in which you used to draw your line, ensure that they do not hit hard objects. Because when they hit hard objects, now what will happen? These smooth surfaces will become rough. And when it becomes rough, your drawing will become rough also. And one of the properties of technical drawing is that you need to produce a neat and accurate drawing. So when these things are rough now, your drawing cannot be accurate. So you have to protect this what, set square. And also because they are glass, ensure that kerosene do not come in contact with them. If not, the kerosene will allow them to break. It will cause them to break or crack. Then we look at the T-square, and we look at the pair of compasses. And I say these compasses are used to, what, to draw accurate circles and circular arcs. How? By measuring what? The radius. You just use this um, pin. Look at this side. This is a, um, the pointed end, and this is your pencil, where your pencil is attached. You take your, your radius. Let's say you want to take your radius of five centimeter. You place your meter rule. When you place the meter rule, you take the radius with the compass seven centimeter or five centimeter. Now, when you do this, you have your drawing paper on the drawing board. You place it on it, and then what? You take, you draw your circle. Now, when you take a meter rule and measure the radius of this circle, you discover that what? This circle will have the same or accurate measurements as you have measured. Now, how do you care for this compass? You care for it by what? Ensuring that when you are done with using it, you remove every sweat by cleaning it to prevent corrosion because these things are made of metals. So to prevent them from rusting, you remove every sweat after use. Then we look at the T-square. I say T-square is for drawing horizontal lines. We use T-square to set our drawing. And to care for this T-square, ensure that was, you do not play or joke with this T-square because the blade are kept at right angle. This blade enables us to set our drawing, our, um, our drawing. Now, once you joke with this T-square and you displace the blade from their right angle, you will have a difficulty setting your drawing. Then we look at the French curves, and we say these French curves have different shapes, like you can see, and they are used to get draw what's irregular and complex curves. Then I give you an assignment. I say you should mention five drawings instruments. Mention the use of what T square and set square. So this will come to the end of today's lesson on the second part of drawing instruments and materials. Please, if you're watching this video online, ensure you subscribe to our channel to get more of our videos. And I would love you to keep following this class on the classes on basic technology as I will be throwing more light on some topics that seems difficult. Remember, you are preparing for your exam and it will be necessary for you to get the understanding before your exam. The assignment I give is to be submitted on the WhatsApp group. You see a number on your screen, contact the number so you can be added to the WhatsApp group. I still remain Samuel Mabatunde. Thank you and goodbye.